Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. Today, we're going to be looking at producing a cash flow report. I've had a number of queries from, and comments uh, from viewers that wanted to know, well, if I have a cost loaded schedule, how can I produce a cash flow report? And so this video is going to try to answer that question for those viewers. Now, if you're not that familiar with Microsoft Project, I would suggest you subscribe, go to my Microsoft Project playlists and start wherever you're comfortable at. But generally, you know, if you're just starting out maybe video number one, I have uh, Microsoft Project Made Easy and I have Microsoft Project uh, schedules. Uh, one is uh, nine videos. The other has about 2021 20, videos currently. I keep adding to them and you can sort of see by the topics uh, what they are and jump in where you need to jump in. I'm not going to get into too much detail about resources, but I'm going to give you just a little bit of an overview so you know what, what I'm uh, trying to display here. Uh, so from a perspective, I have a project here. I've got a work breakdown structure. It's a construction project pre-construction, construction, various headings in the work breakdown structure. Uh, if you're familiar with the updating process, then you can kind of tell I've updated this schedule up to about uh, the beginning of October or end of September 2021, and uh, the rest isn't updated. I have set a baseline uh, here. So if I go into my variance screen, I can see I've got a baseline that's been set. I could also check that by going to set baseline and I can see it was last saved recently. And so it's there. I would have had to have set the baseline before I did the updates, I would hope, so I could see the variances because this way I can see under the cost screen. And remember, I always like to click on this square icon box and right click to switch screens. On the cost screen, we had a baseline of $941,000. We currently have a costing of $976,040. We have a variance that means from what we planned and what's happened so far of $34,400. We've actually spent of that overall amount, we've actually spent uh, $316,770.15. And what's remaining to do, that would be after the status date, that's currently what we see as remaining to be done cost-wise is $659,269. And if we want to see where the variances are, we can scroll up and down and we can see where the variances are, but we could also go to our resource sheet. I slide to the left, right click, slide down, go to my resource sheet. And I, in this case, I've already got it in the cost screen, but probably when you open it, it'll be in this screen. Uh, and uh, you go, you can go to the cost screen and see individually how each resource is doing uh, compared to what we planned. And again, if this stuff all seems foreign to you, go to my playlist and look under, particularly if you're looking at cost loading of resources, uh, look under those particular videos and you'll find out how all of this stuff kind of gets done. Uh, so I could see which, which resources are over budget, like over what I planned for them. And that's giving me my variance. Uh, so I'm going to slide to the left again. I'm going to go back to my Gantt chart. And if we've created all this, uh, then that means we've got some inf data that we can review. Now, if I just wanted a simple uh, cash flow report, uh, I could go to report, right? And I could click on report. I could go to where it says costs, go to cash flow. And that would give it to me here. Now, you probably wouldn't see this. I'm quite sure what you would see when you'd first open it up. I'm just gonna, I clicked on this box anywhere and I'm going to go over here and I'm gonna go edit time. And probably I suspect what you would see, it usually opens up in quarters for some reason. You'd see something like this. And I'm just going to um, get this out of the way of this. And in this particular case, I've got the cumulative cash flow. I've actually put in a line item for actual uh, uh, costs that have been incurred as of that day, as of this date, which was sometime in the fourth quarter. 
And so that's that other line item. If I click on anywhere on the graph, right? So if I click on the graph here, it will bring up this field list on the right side. And that's where I can select what I want it to show. So I have actual cost there. When I click that, it's not there. So on yours, if you have a cost loaded screen, you may not see your actual cost. You might say, I'd like to see my actual cost. Well, then you can click on that and it will display that information for you or any of these other ones if you wanted to um, review that for those purposes. And so you can follow those amounts and you can sort of see both the cumulative, which is the red line here, and the cost. Now the costs are showing you, in this case, by the quarter. As I said, nobody really, well, sometimes I guess uh, some companies would, especially like publicly traded companies and things of that nature, they give quarterly reports. But if you are giving something to a client, it's probably gonna be monthly. So I would slide to the left, uh, right, click on the edit button and pick what time period you want. I want months, I'm gonna click okay. You can format it how you want it to format, you know, different views of how the information shows. I'm gonna click okay. And then it puts that information um, there. And if it's kind of like in your way, you can manipulate this a little bit to um, try to show it a little bit uh, better. Or if that's not that smooth for you, you could look at, all right, instead of Jan, maybe I'll just go with the abbreviation. That way it doesn't block my lines. I can see it a lot more clear across there, whatever you like. Okay. so. The red line is cumulative, so that would be adding the month to month. Uh, on the left side, this is the month to month amount. So we could see there would be a lot of money going out in October, uh, so around 170,000, whereas not much money going out at the beginning of the project, so April, the April month. And so that'll give you a good indication of monthly what money is going out and cumulatively how much it's adding up to because this on the right side should add up to your overall project amount that you're after and that'll give you that simple report now you can you can play with these things you know you can uh, do all kinds of different uh, manipulations if you want to show more information or less information like this is showing actual cost of work performed earn value analysis numbers maybe you don't want those there uh, you could just click here and that should take them out from that view. Uh, if there was another Id line item that you'd want there, like actual cost is there. So that's usually one. Maybe you'd like to see the cost variance uh, amount. So there you can see that 34,000 uh, amount. So that's always a useful one to see where you're at with that. Uh, again, clicking here, uh, that's giving us... Um, the field list on the right side. Again, you could do customizations with other uh, line items that you might want to see besides just these three. Also, it gets kind of crowded if you show too much. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. So that's your simple cash flow statement, how you can show it. But I did want to show you a couple other things uh, while you're here on this topic. You can go to report, you can go to visual reports, and you can see there's visual reports that you can export to Excel or Visio or both, depending what it is. And you can see it says over here, cash flow report. So there we go. So I double clicked on it and it came up. We've got cash flow. Uh, this is an Excel now. And if I go to where it says task usage, gives me uh, the data in task usage. There are things we can do in here to manipulate the data somewhat. You are in Excel, so those of you that are Power Excel users will probably like that. Uh, this is showing you the uh, money that's going out by uh, the quarter and by the week. And so the data is provided in that format uh, from Microsoft Project. So this is essentially um, how uh, the data is uh, being uh, put out uh, under the task usage uh, chart by the week. So some amounts are fairly regular. That's probably the uh, site super's cost or the project manager's cost in there uh, from uh, that perspective. But problem is it's kind of not really complete in this sense, I find. So I'm not too thrilled with 
uh, the way it exports. I'm quite sure you could uh, do a lot of different uh, things uh, with it and you could add different uh, line items over here. So you could probably manipulate it uh, somewhat to uh, show the information that uh, you'd want it to show. Um, but I would uh, suggest an easier way. Uh, it, I think it gives a little bit better um, visual aspect to what you're trying to do. So I'm going to go back to Microsoft Project. I'm going to close this. And in this case now, I'm going to go back to my uh, I'm going to go back to my regular screen. So I'm going to click Task, go to Gantt Chart, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide to the left. And we talk about task usage in the other one. Well, there's a whole table task usage in Microsoft Project, and under that table, I can see all of my tasks and I can see who's assigned overall to the particular tasks. So I've got all of these resources and they're assigned to all of my activities and they're listed. Now you see over here, it shows both work, how many hours for resources that are listed by the hour, like project manager is listed as a resource that's work and uh, site super is listed as work as well so you can see the hours that they're working project managers assigned to the whole project 50 percent site super is 100 percent assigned that's why i'm going along the hours uh, slightly differ and i can see it right now i've got it in by the month i probably set that up earlier for you to set that up it's quite easy you go to the view tab it probably was in days maybe originally. So that's showing how much money is being uh, going out or being worked on on a particular day. Uh, so those would be the cost that you're incurring per day. And uh, that's uh, giving you that listing there. Now, if I want to uh, get a better perspective, I can look at this by the months where I had it. And now I can see how much is being incurred by the month. Now I got this messy work stuff here, so I don't want that there. I, I'm, right now I'm not interested in that. I might be interested in that if I'm monitoring uh, different hours of work by different trades or my own forces. But right now I just want it to disappear. And I just want to hone in on uh, the cost elements uh, for the project. So under task usage here, I can see um, the costs that are being incurred um, by the month on the project. And so you can see like in September, for example, there is $112,000 being incurred because this is a summary task. If, as long as you've created a summary task for your entire project, that'll show up. That's summing up everything below it. So that's not only this plus this, it is this, 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 and etc. So what it's doing is it's summing up all of the individual line items to give you the total. Now, if I added all of these up, we're under the cost, and this is for the whole project here, then that would add up to my overall project cost. And remember the project baseline cost, if I go under cost, uh, is $941,640. Because I'm at cost, that's where that is um, line item. That line item is actually uh, coming up for. Now, if I go back and I go back to my entry view, which is where I was. Well, actually, I could I could leave it in this view um, too because it does give me all that information. This is like really critical information that I want to see here. I can see my um, costs that have been lined up. I can also see by the overall project and how much that is actually um, totaling up. Now, this would be nice. So what I could do is I could copy and paste this. So I could copy this and I could paste it into Excel, depending on what I'm trying to look for. So I could just copy and paste. And I've got that there. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to Microsoft Project. And now I'm going to copy all of this. All right, so I'm going to copy all of this. Oops. 
I might have to hit control C or I could go to the task tab and click copy. First, I'm going to get rid of this. So I just got that over here. Do that again. Sometimes doesn't know which table it wants to copy. So I'm going over there, copy. I'm going to go back and I'm going to line this first row up with new township administrative building. All right. So I'm going to go there, new township administrative building, and I'm going to go control V. And that's going to put all of that information in there. So I've just lined uh, those amounts up. And I would have to, this one thing, you kind of have to type it in, which is a little bit annoying from my perspective. But uh, so that would be April, May, June. And you get the, you get, you get the idea here, right? So June. July and so on. The other thing is I got to get this sorted out here so that they all line up. So I'll just drag along across here so I can adjust the widths of my cells. I'll go to format over here and let's go uh, auto fit column width. Maybe we could, I didn't do that first one. So we'll do that one too. Auto fit column width. Oops, that's not doing it the way I want it. So we'll do it like that. All right, and if it's still not giving you everything that you want, like as far as height goes, maybe I'll go auto fit row height. And now I've got that information there. And so if I really want to know what money is going out for my project, I would just keep this up uh, and I would uh, be able to, it depends what you're after on this particular statement, but now you've got all the data maybe more than you even um, want, uh, but that would keep it all in place and you would have it for the project. Like, especially if we're looking at cash flow going across here, we might not even want these ones. We could delete them out. If we don't, we just want cash flow. That would be the amounts under cost that is going out, right? You could also, by the way, you could also go back and you could go in Microsoft Project. You could change this that if you didn't want it to show cost, maybe you want it to show actual cost, right? So you could click there and now it shows actual cost. So you can see the difference between cost and actual cost, particularly uh, where you have uh, a difference in the amounts right, uh, that are being incurred, like you got 112 and here you got 85, you got 91 and here you got 56,000. So you got tri quite dramatic differences in the amounts. Of course, it stops at this point because we haven't done the work past this particular point. So that's giving you those line items. And if I don't want costs, I can just get rid of the cost. And then I could copy and paste the other if I wanted to do that. Uh, into a spreadsheet as well. Sometimes I find that's actually a little bit more intuitive to do than um, kind of playing around with the different uh, report functions. But again, to each each their own, whichever way it works best for you, um, give it a try and that will help you with uh, producing uh, cash flow reports. So hopefully that got uh, your questions answered and gives you some different ways of thinking about it and deciding what information exactly you want and then working on that. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and I hope that this uh, helped and don't forget to click the subscribe button to see more videos on MS Project and Construction Project Management. Bye for now.